Amen. Y'all know we have started a new series last week. If you missed it, it was Get Over It. Uh, that is what we're talking about. I talked about hog dogs. If y'all don't know what that is, y'all need to go listen. Y'all probably know some. I hope you ain't one, but y'all might know some. But it will encourage you, and we're going to continue that because you know what I believe? I believe God has equipped you to overcome every obstacle Every trial that you think you're going to die in, I'm telling you, God's already put inside of you. The Spirit of God is greater than any attack the enemy brings at you. Amen? Amen. amen. I said amen. 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 So for all of you warriors out there, we're going to continue today. And I am so grateful that I have such amazing leaders in this church that I'm mentoring and I really push them out of their comfort zone and so I've got another one today that I'm bringing up it's my daughter in the gospel go on come on up here Michelle she's going to be speaking on today the spirit of offense y'all now I know I know y'all might not know this but offense builds offense around your life it keeps blessings out and it keeps a separation from you getting to walk into the things God has prepared for you. So I'm going to walk you through this real quick. Put your hand on your head. Y'all know where I'm going. Father, remove every single distraction. Everything that I have worried about, everything I have fretted over this week. And Lord, I just give it to you right now. I don't want anything to get in the way of this word that you have for me, God. Just say, I receive it. I receive it, and I believe it. God, let it bear good fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around and high-five somebody and tell them, get your word, get your word. Sister Michelle, come on. She's going to bless y'all today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Kimber. I just love that woman right there. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Y'all stood long enough through praise and worship. <laughs> Y'all look so good today. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? All right, all right. I just want to welcome you one more time. It's such an honor to be standing up here, and I am so glad to be able to do life with each and every one of you. I'm so excited to be able to worship with you every week, and it is a little a little uh, nervous standing up here without singing. I'm just going to tell you that, but I am excited, and I'm honored that so much inside of me, even when I don't see it for myself, I thank you for pushing me, and I thank you for always making me do better, and uh, I love you so much. I love you. To our online viewers, welcome. One more time, everybody say welcome. welcome. We love you so much. Go ahead and comment. If you would, where you are watching from, if you've got any prayer requests or anything, go ahead and put those in there, and go ahead and feel free to comment throughout the message. I'm excited, and uh, I'm just going to say this might be a little bit of a rough message. Y'all ready? You, you get settled in your seats a little bit. You ready? Okay. So we're in the Get Over It series. That means you can't be all soft and stuff. You have to have some thick skin, all right? Get Over It series, and the initial title was It Ain't About You. Oh, okay. Well, y'all... It ain't about you. Okay. All right. So then I decided, okay, well, Lord, what else do they maybe will be able to resonate with? So uh, the enemy has played you. How many about know that? Do you know that the enemy's been playing you? If you don't, I'm about to let you know today. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. He's been playing you for a sucker because he's been using you. He's been using in a way that you may not think the enemy has had a hand in. You think it may just be something else. But today I'm going to help you because I have been helped. Um, pastor's always saying you don't come up here and talk about anything unless you have already been delivered from it and walking successfully on the other side. So I can go ahead and tell you that I have been one of these people, but I'm going to help you. Amen. John 10.10. 10. John 10, 10, I want to go ahead and let you know who the devil is if you don't already know. A thief is only one thing, and a thief, we're talking about the enemy. He's only one thing. He has only one thing in mind. He has one, one MO, that is to steal, slaughter, and destroy. Some versions say kill, but he really wants to slaughter. He's coming in and just with a big sickle, just shoo, shoo, taking you out, right? 
He wants to steal your opportunities. He wants to slaughter your personal, uh, your possibilities for the future, and he wants to destroy relationships. We talk about the vision of this house all the time. What is one of those? To encourage relationships, right? When you operate in the spirit of offense, which is what we're talking about, that is a crack that the enemy uses. It's actually strategic warfare that he uses to break down your relationships, Ephesians 6, 12. Now, let me let you know, you can't fight the devil with your hands. Some of y'all been in the street too long. Maybe you want to, but you can't. You have to fight him a certain way. Ephesians 6, 12, it says your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. He's playing you, and you don't even know it but we're going to help about it. Okay, my personal experience, let me just tell you to qualify why I can stand here. First off, because I've been asked to stand here. Second off, because I have overcome this. I'm 46 years old, not scared to say it. Um, And I would say probably 40 years of those, 35 to 40 years of those, I have dealt with a spirit of offense. You couldn't tell me nothing. You could not correct me. You could not instruct me. That's from parents to people that I so-called loved. Okay, so I will say that it came a revelation when we started talking about these things. And I really started bowing my knee to God and asking him to help me with me. Why am I so funny? You know, why can't I keep relationships or why can I not going to the next level in ministry? Why? Because I had a spirit of offense on me and didn't realize how dangerous it was. So a few causes that um, create a spirit of offense. Now, there's plenty, but here's just a few. And I want to see if any of y'all, and if you do, you, you don't have to nudge. Don't nudge your neighbor if they are, okay, husbands, wives, whatever. Don't do that. But if you are dealing with these, I hope that it opens up your eyes for just a moment. Because, again, I'm here to help. Your own wounded spirit, scars and past hurts, they become like the lenses that you look through. When you have a scar, someone, and legitimately they hurt you, okay? So my mama gave me away, all right? Now she, I've been adopted. She kept my brother and sister. I'm pretty scarred on that, right? Or I should, or I was for a long time. And God actually delivered me from that. And up until her last day, we had a beautiful relationship because I gave that over to the Lord. If you do not give your scars and your hurts and the past things over to the Lord, you will see everybody through them. You will see about who left you, who abandoned you, who rejected you, and you will look at each and every person like that. So you've got to get those glasses, those lenses off of your face. But that will start a spirit of offense. The second thing is assuming the intentions of others are negative without even knowing the facts. Sit there and talking to yourself, looking at somebody. They passed you by. I'm going to use Sister Kim because y'all know she's one of the sweetest people in here. She loves on everybody. She hugs on everybody. She says something to you and your baby. But there's one day out of the 50 that you've already been here that she walked past you and didn't say a word. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, what's her problem? Why didn't she talk to me? You know, what's her deal? Well, little did you know, she was trying to get a message to the pastor because her mic wasn't working or something else was going on. But you, because again, you're looking through those lenses of offense, you're looking at her going, oh, she don't like me. Oh, I did, you know, she's something. No, you can't do that. And we have all done it. Has anybody done that in here? Are you going to be real with me today? Okay. Praise the Lord. Holding on to grudges. Now, this one I'm going to tell you even while I was studying, I did not realize the severity of this. But if you hold a grudge against somebody, whether it's your mama, your daddy, your brother and sister in Christ, it does not matter. If you hold a grudge against somebody, let me tell you, Mark 11, 25 through 26, and I'm just going to read portions of this, and I encourage you to go back and look at the full verses. It says, if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so that your father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. You keep holding a grudge on somebody. You go to prayer every day. You spend hours in your prayer closet. He's not listening. He can't hear you because you have grudge in your heart. That's the word. That's not me. 
That's not my opinion. That's the word of God. It goes on further in 26 to say, if you don't forgive your brother, your sister, the person that you're holding a grudge against, don't expect your father in heaven to release you from your misdeeds. Do you really want to stand before heaven doing all the things that you know to do right, but all because you held a grudge, you stand before him and he says, I'm sorry, I can't forgive you. Is that something you're willing to jeopardize? All right then. There are so many broken places that we have failed to yield or give to Jesus to heal and restore. I want you to just take just a quick moment. And as the Holy Spirit reveals that to you, I want you to get ready to release it today. Because we have chosen to hold on to those things. That's a choice. So just as, as easy as it is to hold on to it, we can choose to release it. We can choose to ask for forgiveness. We can choose to move on from this point and make it a new day. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, so six dangers of offense. Again, I'm going to list a few scriptures. Go back and please read it. Number one, being offended opens the door to rebellion. Now, how many know by the word of God's definition, not Webster's, how many know what rebellion is like? Does anybody know? Come on, shout it out if you know. Witchcraft. Does witchcraft have any, any place in the kingdom of God? All right. So 1 Samuel 15, 23 says rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. And stubbornness, which when you are a spirit of offense, you're stubborn. You're stubborn to correction. You're stubborn to instruction. You're stubborn to all kinds of things. It's stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. Does worshiping idols have any place in the kingdom of God? Okay, then. So there's one danger. Being offended will cause you to be rebellious and you'll be looked upon as a witch and worshiping idols. Do not have the spirit of offense. Number two, being offended will keep you from receiving instruction, correction, direction, or even hearing a timely word for your season. We know this. I know this for myself because there was a time where I would hear a word every Sunday, and it was good word. It was good seed. And I should be leaps and bound from where I am today, but because I refused to apply it and allow it to go into a soft heart, my heart was still hard. That's my choice, my doing, okay? Proverbs 18, 19 says, it is easier to conquer a strong city than to win back a friend whom you've offended. When you're offended, you are more guarded than Jericho. Your walls have been built up for years, who knows how many years? Like I said, mine's good, 35, 40 years. I built these walls up. Nobody could penetrate. Nobody could tell me. Nobody could help me. It's not even a correction in, in a negative sense. It's correcting you to be better. This is what Pastor Kimber does all the time. This is the place, we talk about it, equipping to lead. Empowering with purpose. How can she do any of these things if you've got Jericho around you? You've got to get rid of the spirit of offense. The next thing, number three, you become judgmental of others. Okay? Now, this one might be a little deep. I know we can all agree that we have been there a time or two where we have looked at somebody and tried to talk about how they were, what they're doing wrong, because we feel, I don't know, holier than thou. It's not. You're not holier than thou. That's a spirit of offense. That's demonic. Matthew 7, 1 through 6. And now this is Jesus talking. Again, this is not my opinion. This is Jesus. Refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others. Further on it says, for you'll be judged by the same standard that you've used to judge others. Further on it says, focus on the flaw in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own. You're being a hypocrite. How can you stand there in righteous judgment and try to call out someone to help them when you are dealing with grudge, when you're dealing with this, these issues? You can't. It's coming from a place of a cynical judgment, and that is not of God. The next one, being offended will keep you from trusting to the point of not wanting to sit under any authority. 
How many in here and online, if you're, you know, if you want to lead, I want to see those little whoop whoop hands. Let me know you want to be leading something. If you want to lead a ministry, if God has called you to lead a ministry, lift up your hands. I want to I see. Anybody? Anybody want to be in leadership? Okay. Well, you can't lead anything unless you're led. You cannot lead not one thing if you are not willing to be led. I don't think they like that, Pastor Clifford. But that's okay. I wasn't here to uh, be friendly. I'm here to kind of help and correct some things and break some chains off in Jesus' name. If you want to lead, you have to be led. This lady right here, she prays for us. She toils for us in the midnight hours. She fights demons over us. And you can't get rid of your grudges. You can't get rid of your offense and allow her to correct some things and to prune off some things in your life. But then you're wondering why you're not in ministry where you think you should be right now. You're wondering where your house is not, where it should be right now. You're wondering why your business isn't why, where it should be right now. It's because you won't allow someone in, in a head, in authority, to help correct some things in your life. She's called an overseer for a, another reason. She stands above and is able to actually see some things in the spirit. Amen? Being offended will cause you to remove yourself from covering. It's like an umbrella. Covering is like a, a spiritual umbrella. What happens? You put an umbrella up and you're what? Protected. You're shielded from the elements, the, the rain, the sleet, the snow, whatever it is. There's a spiritual umbrella that you put over your life that shields you from spiritual elements. When you decide, again, this is your choice. This is your choice. When you decide to step outside of that umbrella, Whatever hits your head is your problem. You did that. All because of offense? Are you willing to take that risk? When you step under the umbrella, the spiritual covering, the headship, the authority of the house, you're able to align yourself not just to be safe and not have those elements. Now, you're going to have some things hit you, okay? Now, being a Christian doesn't exempt you from, from trials. But there are some things that are unnecessary. But when you step out... I mean, what you going to do? When you step back in, though, there's certain things that you're covered from. There's certain things that begin to align in your life because you're in alignment with the authority of the house. Being offended will hinder or even break your relationship with God. Now, some of you can afford maybe breaking off some relationships here on earth. Sure. Sure. But can you afford breaking a relationship with God? All because you choose to be offended. All because you choose to not let go of your past and your hurts. Is that something you're willing to do? I want you to just take an inventory for just a moment. I want you to look back, maybe just on this last week. Has there anything that you, you've done, you've chosen to do? to be offensive to someone else, to be offended by someone else. Rebellion, witchcraft, stubbornness, idols, critical, they have no part in his heart for his people. They have no room in the kingdom of God. And it's time for us to quit looking through those lenses. The enemy has suckered you long enough. I'm here to wake somebody up today. And I'm closing. It's short, I understand. Sometimes you don't have to be lengthy. But it's time for you to wake up. What lenses are you looking through? What lenses are you allowing the enemy to taint? What, 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 what's going on in your life? What's going on? You're in a place where there's harvest. You're in a place where there is fruit. People are multiplying. And if you don't see yourself doing the same thing, then there's time for you to sit back and look in the mirror just for a moment. And it's hard. I'm going to tell you it's hard. There's been some crying moments for the Lord with me personally. And I had to come to grips with a lot of things that I have done for many decades. But when I chose to begin to allow people to correct and instruct, to help Look at what the Lord has done in my life. There are things and blessings that, the, that God has poured out on me that I can't even explain why. I'm not even worthy for them. I'm not even worthy to stand here. I really am not. 
by the things that I've done by my own hand, but I've submitted and aligned myself into this ministry, and I've allowed the woman of God, the angel of this house, to look inside and say, okay, you're destined for more. You're purposed for more. But these things have got to go. You can't do these things. You can't be with this person. You can't operate this way. You can't dress this way. You can't do... You have to allow yourself. You have to submit yourself and surrender yourself to authority. And if it is not here, find a place that God calls you to. Find a place. But I'm going to say, as for me and my house, this is where we will serve the Lord. This is the way where we will submit ourselves and we will become better because of the anointing that is on this woman's life. So I want everybody to stand up because I told you I'm quick. I'm quick. <laughs> but we're going to have an opportunity today. First and foremost, it's all about his children. It's all about having people come into the kingdom of God. So we are most definitely going to do a salvation prayer. We are also going to do a prayer of deliverance for that spirit of offense. Amen. And as nobody going to judge you, we're going to celebrate with you. Amen. Because it's a freeing thing. It is so free. So what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. And everybody, everybody, if you have been away from God, if maybe you have never had a relationship with him, and you feel the Holy Spirit pulling on your heart to commit your life to the one that's above all, which is God himself, I want you to slip up your hand, and we want to pray with you. We want to agree with you. Thank you, sir. My God. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Y'all, there are people coming back to him today. They're releasing spirit. Thank you, sir. Releasing the spirit of offense. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. So everybody, put your hand over your heart. We're all going to say it together. We're not here to embarrass anyone. We're going to say it together. Father, I receive your love. I know that I am a sinner. But today I receive your grace. I acknowledge that your son Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood for me. And I accept his love. Thank you for saving me. I thank you for making me new today. I surrender my life to you. And from this day forward, I will live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so excited for those that came back to the Lord today. If you're watching online and you gave your life maybe for the first time or you recommitted your life to Jesus today, we want to pray with you. Drop us a, a note, a comment, even private messages if you'd like. We want somebody to reach out and pray with you. And until next Sunday, we'll see you then. Praise God.